Alright, welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, everybody! So, we've cleared the secret episode now, and it's time to continue with the bonus episode. So, today we're going to go back to all three of the characters' stories to finish up most of the Mirage Arena. So first up, we're going to go back to Aqua, since she's the best character and she should have the easiest time. We'll then work our way backwards <laughs> by going back to Ventus, and then eventually back to Terra. So we can clear the remaining uh, Mirage Arena challenges. We won't clear all of them! but we will clear most of them. So here we are back at Mirage Arena, and one thing I'm actually going to do is we can actually change our armor color now, and I think what I'm gonna do... I wanna experiment with some of the different armor colors. Ooh, we could have a nice purple. Actually, I like the purple for Aqua. Or we can make it pure blue. Ooh. Dang, that actually looks really cool. <laughs> or we could have her just be a deep blue. Um, I'll have it be mostly blue, but that's that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I like it. <laughs> New armor color because we've beaten the game now. So if we want to see our arena levels and arena missions that we still have left, we can go to game records, arena missions. So we're arena level 24, we can get all the way up to arena level 30. So we've got six different levels to get. Uh, there are three different metal milestones we haven't met. Uh, 5555 five, five, five medals, 7777 seven, seven medals, and 9999 nine, nine medals. And then there are also three remaining arena challenges we have left to clear before we can reach the final arena level. We've already done all of the five laps for Rumble Racing within the time limit, and we've also won the Command Board game uh, milestones. So, at this point, we just basically need to clear the remaining arena missions and grind up arena medals, both of which we can do this time. So first up, we are going to make sure we've got a proper deck set up. So, first up, we are equipping Light Bloom as our shot lock. It is the best shot lock. We are going to unequip Teleport and Homing Slide. The reason for that is both of those can potentially make it harder for us to use Renewal Barrier, which is generally a much better option. As far as our deck goes, well... I think this is where we're going to start breaking out the Thunder Surges big time. Use Thunder Surges, and then we're going to use some Mind Squares, primarily. That's what we're going to do. And we'll keep one Kiraga on. Alright. So let's take a look at Arena Mode. What do we have left? So we've done Day of Reckoning, done Wheels of Misfortune, Risky Riches, Weaver Fever, Sinister Sentinel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Only one we have left is Monster of the Sea. It's a 4 out of 5, 8 rounds. Alright. Down to the wire. we got to complete this within 7 minutes and 30 seconds. So this is actually going to be kind of the first of the uh, bonus bosses that we're going to attempt. So, with our brand new awesome armor, let's step right in and begin Monster of the Sea. We know that music, and we know this setting. Round one, yep! This arena challenge actually is taking place inside of Monstro, hence why it's called Monster of the Sea. So we've got a bunch of enemies that we got to deal with. So I'm hoping we can enter the Rhythm Mixer command style. Alright, where, where are the remaining enemies? There you are. Maybe I should have equipped a different Keyblade, because I'm still using the one that doesn't have as high of a magic stat, but... Oh well. It'll have to do for the time being. Cool, we cleared out all the enemies, so that's going to be the first round over. There he is! Round 2 versus Monstro. So this is the first of the bonus bosses in Birth by Sleep. It's Monstro. Yes, that giant whale of a whale is the first bonus boss in Birth by Sleep, and I believe he was only in the final mix uh, re-release, so yeah, we also have a time limit. Basically, we have a certain amount of time to complete this before, as you can see in the upper left corner, 
We've got only about three minutes to take on Monstro before he eats us again, and then we have to fight more enemies. So, yeah, all this time we've been inside Monstro via, uh, he's a world, but now he's a boss. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta chuck these explosive barrels at him. If we can hit him with two explosive barrels, then we get something good. Unfortunately, he also can do this. And this is where Mind Square really comes in handy, because he can launch himself at the main platform, and if he does that, you're gonna be uh, taking a lot of damage, but so can he. Cool, so we hit him with two barrels in a row. Once he's unconscious, get on his ton and attack, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. And as you can see, Monster is really low on HP now, and we have Rhythm Mixer, so we can wail him away even more. And yes! We killed Monster really quickly! Monstro is definitely the easiest of the bonus bosses. But there we go. You win! But not only that, but clearing Monstro gives us 450 medals, and if you clear quick quickly, 675 medals. So this is definitely the best round in the game to grind up the medal uh, rewards for. And we obtain mini. And we've collected 55555 medals, and we cleared Monster of the Sea. That's awesome. So one thing I should have done was I should have equipped the Pixie Petal Keyblade, because better magic stat, everybody. Monstro gets added in the other category of characters. Very nice. And that's just one way of dealing with him. There's actually a much better way of dealing with Monstro accurately, believe it or not. So what this is going to be is uh, we're going to start where you're going to equip just a little command called Mega Flare. No, no big deal. Nothing wrong with that. And then after Mega Flare, we're just going to equip... Nothing but the Mind Square abilities. We already had a lot, but no. Nothing but Mind Squares and then Mega Flare. That's it. Now, obviously, we've got to wait for this to recharge, but once that's there, <laughs> I'm going to attempt Monster of the Sea again. And we also unlocked another arena challenge, Villain's Vendetta, arena level 25. Yeah, that one's gonna be tough. We're not doing that one. We're going back to Monster of the Sea again, because I'm gonna show you the quickest, most efficient way of dealing with Monstro. And when it comes to getting a bunch of arena medals, this is the one that you wanna do. So here we go. So the best way of beating Monstro is to go in, Mega Flare. This should just insta-kill the entire first round. <laughs> I told you guys, Mega Flare is stupidly overpowered. Now, Mega Flare is not going to be good against Monstro, but what will be good against Monstro are these explosive barrels. And if we're fast, beautiful. Now we just spam Mind Square over and over again, which takes us into Rhythm Mixer. And then we can just use River Mixer to take out Monstro. Just like that. Boom. Monstro is dead in like under a minute. <laughs> you know, Monstro, you deserve it. Why are you so evil? Yep, literally. 52 seconds. That's going to be how we hit the metal uh, rewards. Man, I, I beat Monstro in 49 seconds that time. That's great. And here we go. We fit, we got the last m medal m milestone for the arena. Nice. So now that we got 7,000 odd medals, let's see what we can uh, buy here that we don't already have. Okay, we're going to need Group Cure. Group Cura. We don't have that one either. Group Curaga. Yes, please. Uh, we don't have Confetti. We'll grab that. We didn't get fireworks even from the sticker album? That's weird. Victory pose. Vanish. Uh, we did not get Trinity Limit as Aqua. So let's grab that. We got Voltage Stack. Oh, uh, we need Unison Rush. And I think that's it for the commands. The only other things we have left to get are the Giga Magic uh, Giga Attack recipes. We don't technically need those, but... I mean, they would fill out our item... <laughs> They would fill out our item quota, but I don't think that actually counts towards 100%. But if we go to reports now... Oh yeah, sure enough, command collection, we have collected every single command in the entire game. As Aqua. 
And I never actually showed all of these off. Let's take a look. So all these, so group cure, restore a small amount of HP to yourself and nearby friends, and then cure as a large amount, and cure as a huge amount. Neither of these are very good, like, they, they were only supposed to be used in the Birth by Sleep multiplayer for the PSP, or on the, like, two fights in the entire game where you actually have party members. It works for that too, but the problem is, because these don't technically count as magic commands, these are friend commands, which means your magic hastes and attack hastes don't work on these, so they recharge really, really slowly. Confetti, Fireworks, and Victory Pose do the same thing. You basically get the same amount of experience points when you use it as you did for the last enemy that you killed. Vanish makes yourself invisible to foes for a set period of time. Unison Rush. Rush the enemy, press the button that appears at the right time for more power. It uses three slots. Voltage Stack. Jolt enemies with electricity. Line up your markers with the left stick to trigger an explosion. Uses free slots. Trinity Limit. Detonate a light charge. Press X when prompted for more power. Uses free slots. And then we've got the Illusion Commands we showed off as Terra. I mean, I guess at this point I may as well show these off. But yeah, watch how slowly these commands charge up. It's ridiculous. I mean, not really, but y yeah, it kind of is. So I, I, don't know, I don't know, I guess we'll head over to... Let's go to Dwarf Woodlands, I guess. Is this really combat level 5? Really? That seems surprising to me. There's nothing down this way except an entire mine. So there we go. We pop confetti. Yay! Fireworks! Victory pose. Yeah. Well, that was exciting. Vanish is still charging, so are the group cures. They can still attack us, they just can't see us. So that created a large circle. Basically, anybody within the circle that's not an enemy would also get cured as well. And the circles get bigger the bigger the uh, cure is. It's not fantastic, but I mean, I guess it is unique. And if you thought those charged up slowly, look at Unison Rush and Voltage Stack. Yeah, and they take up free slots, so basically you just don't really get to use commands when you use these two. Doesn't that sound like fun? It's not. I've moved to Neverland, so that way the enemies are stronger and we can potentially see the power of these attacks a little bit better. So first we'll use Voltage Stack. We basically have to keep this uh, within the cursor and we can deal some extra damage. But honestly, considering how slow it charges and how many command slots it takes up, not really that good. Do not recommend Voltage Stack, to be honest. Now let's try Unison Rush. <laughs> we can just mash Triangle over and over again to mass attack the enemies. That one looks really cool, and again, um, both of these attacks are group attacks, so if you are playing multiplayer with friends, and they uh, get next to you when you're using the attacks, they can use the attacks as well. So vol uh, Voltage Attack can be a bit better with three people using it all at the same time, and you're all invincible while using it. And Unison Rush in multiplayer, completely broken. Yes, it takes an forever and a half to charge. Yes, it uh, takes up three slots, but when you have three people all doing like a super powerful shot lock at the same time, it basically insta-kills anything, even the even the bonus bosses. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. Only thing left is Trinity Limit, which I think takes the longest to charge up. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, Unison Rush takes longer to charge than Voltage Stack and Trinity Limit. Let's see Trinity Limit. Oh, this is what, like, Terra and I were doing at the end of the final fight against Terranor. I'm sure that's better if you have all three of your closest friends, or you and your two closest friends all three together doing it at the same time, but yeah, that is not worth the free slots. At all. I think if you somehow get Trinity Limit for the Trinity Armor fight, then I think Terra and Ventus as CPUs can actually stand in there and do insane damage, but I mean, good luck getting Trinity Limit before fighting Trinity Armor, because Trinity Limit takes a lot of metals to grab, 
And the uh, you don't really have an easy way of getting a bunch of medals in the uh, Mirage Arena before fighting Trinity Armor. You basically just have to spam either Rumble Racing or the Command Board. Alright, now for Aqua we're going to take on the Villain's Vendetta Arena Challenge. But first, we need to make sure we're well... We're, uh, <sighs> we need to make sure we are well prepared. So... We need a very special deck for this, and I have exactly the proper thing. This is going to be the best deck for Villain's Vendetta. Are you guys ready for the ultimate deck? We have Triple Fyraga, 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 and Kiraga. You may not look, it may not look it. But this is the ideal deck for Villain's Vendetta. This is where we're going to see how incredibly busted Triple Fyraga truly is. One Triple Fyraga is pretty good. Two of them? Great. You've got seven in your deck with five magic hastes. Um, we literally are going to be able to just spam Triple Fyraga for the entire thing. So uh, it's going to make the Villain's Vendetta really easy. So here we go. Villain's Vendetta, Arena Level 25, five out of five risk. Eight rounds. Practice makes perfect. We need to change uh, command style 25 times slash shot logging. Okay. I mean, we'll be entering Firestorm command style a whole lot. I do know that. And only Aqua's going to be able to do it this way. Because she's the only one who has triple Fyraga. Basically, it's going to be a boss rush. So first up, we got Iron and Prisoner 1. And here's the thing. For the Iron and Prisoners... We get like close enough that our triple Fyragas connect. We can literally just spam triple Fyraga endlessly, and they won't be able to do anything to us. As you can see, Iron and Prisoner One is just like, uh, duh. What? How do do? I can't do anything. And not only that, but um, it's not going to be limited to just Iron and Prisoner One, who is unable to do anything. I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> Goodbye. Next, we've got the Cursed Coach. And here we go. Start the Blade Charge finisher, I guess. Knock it down. I don't like how Triple Fyraga keeps pushing them away from me. We got the Kiraga just for safety, and because we don't need eight Triple Fyragas, seven is more than enough. And honestly, six would probably be enough if we stagger them a little bit. But I don't think we'll run into troubles. And with the Pixie Petal Keyblade, the Triple Fyragas are doing even more damage than usual because it's just stupidly magically powerful. Starting to think I probably should have put two Kiragas instead of seven Triple Fyragas, but eh. We'll see. There we go, Cursed Coach is dead. <laughs> Next we got the Wheelmaster. Alright, stay in one place. Knock him down? Nope. This guy's a little bit trickier because he does not get knocked down necessarily. But we do also have the Light Bloom Shot Lock. Which kind of does a stupid amount of damage. <laughs> How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Look, I've already proven I can beat these guys, so, I mean, why shouldn't I use the stupidly broken shot lock? And I want to hit his main body, not his little appendages. Because his appendages, we don't actually have to kill in order to beat him. They just drop HP for us. But there we go. Wheelmaster dead. Now we've got Iron and Prisoner 2. Who's a little bit trickier, but not much trickier. We just keep up the strategy of gradually cartwheeling closer and keep step <laughs> Because Triple Fyraga 
continually staggers them while they're taking damage from it. Which means we can just stop them from attacking. Which is good, because the Iron and Prisoners are not very well-designed bosses. They're kind of stupid, especially in Iron and Prisoner 4. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, the Ice Colossus. Oh, jeez. Oh, I was hoping that would deal double damage. Okay, this guy's got a lot of defense. This is where we use shot locks to fill in the gaps of the damage and speed it up a little bit. It's a bit less safe than the triple fire aga, but it's a bit faster. If only we could get the Rhythm Mixer command style using this. Bye bye, Ice Colossus. Now we've got Iron and Prisoner free. So again, my general strategy shoot a triple fire aga, cartwheel once. Shoot another triple fire aga, cartwheel once, rinse and repeat. And once you get up here, we should just be able to spam it, and he'll continually get knocked against the wall. He can't get knocked back any farther, so we can just keep spamming it, and he'll keep getting hit by it. He won't be able to attack, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, guys, triple fire aga is a top tier command, and this is kind of why. It is just not fair if you equip a bunch of them. But I don't care. It's birth by sleep. It's birth by sleep post-game. You use everything at your power to deal with the post-game content because it's just not fair. These guys are fair, it's just very tedious. And I've proven I can beat Iron and Prisoner free multiple times. Now we've got Trinity Armor. Weird that, like, the Iron and Prisoners, who are literally bonus bosses, get staggered from the Triple Fire but stuff like Trinity Armor, who is just a regular boss, does not. Okay, he is invincible while he's doing this. Because Triple Fyraga is homing, that makes it better than Triple Blazaga. So we can just kind of sit underneath him, keep pelting him, and avoid his laser at the same time. Did not mean to... Get the lock off off. Oh, look at that. He's using his own version of Triple Fyraga. His is not as good as mine, though. Bye, Trinity Armor. All right, and here we go. Now we have the final fight against Iron and Prisoner 4. So like I said, Villain's Vendetta is just a boss rush. And if you got seven Triple Fyragas and a Kiraga, should be easy. Now, Iron and Prisoner 4 could potentially start attacking before we get our first Triple Fyraga off. Okay. Darn it. Okay. So he's going into his desperation move. That's okay. We got max level cartwheel. We're fine. This is why we bring the Kiraga for safety. Iron and Prisoner 4 doesn't always stagger from the Triple Fire Raga, but once you get him to stagger once, you're good. Because then he'll just keep staggering over and over again. No, 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 no. That's the- Oh, no! I wanted to cartwheel, but it's like, Payback Surge? You got it! Oh, that sucks. I don't want to take off Payback Raid, but- Or Payback Surge, but doggone it. Sometimes you try to do one action command, and it ends up doing a different one. And that can royally screw you over if you do that. Alright, here we go. Round two against Iron and Prisoner 4. Alright, so he did not stagger from that, so we avoid all these smashes and bashes. Okay, nice. 
so he's gonna start his freaking desperation move. This is why Aqua's cartwheel is amazing. He can't do anything to us. Oh boy, super desperation move already. I swear Iron and Prisoner 4 can stagger from Fire Triple Fireaga. Sometimes. There we go. Yes, there we go. He's dead. He's dead now. He can't get out of this now. We're just gonna stagger him for all eternity. 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 Iron and Prisoner 4 is such a dumbly designed fight that I have no problem cheesing him at all. Like I said, out of all the bonus bosses in the game, there's only one that I would say is actually, like, good. Monstro is okay, but he's just, like, really easy once you get to know how to do him. Alright, there we go! Villain's Vendetta cleared. You'll feel the burn of the Firebender. You win! Aw, oh, we didn't get all the changes that we needed. We only get 500 medals. And we get the Ultima Weapon, a Keyblade that boosts all your stats. It also makes it easier to land critical hits and deals higher damage when you do. There we go. We got the Ultima Weapon. We are Arena Level 29. Ultima Weapon, 7 Strength and 6 Magic. It actually has worse stats than Master Ericus's Keyblade in the Secret episode. But we don't have uh, Master Ericus's Keyblade here, so we're definitely equipping that. And ooh, yeah, it looks so good, doesn't it? That's awesome. So Aqua has now done her due diligence, and now we will move on to uh, clearing Villain's Vendetta with Ventus and Terra, I guess. Alright, now we're playing as Ventus, and much like what we did for Aqua, I want to change Ventus's armor coloration as well. So Ven is mainly the green guy, so okay. That's a- see, that's a little too green for my liking. I don't want him to look like Shrek. Okay, well, may maybe that's too much green. What if we tone the red back, like, to 70%? Okay, this is not as easy to make something look cool as it was for Aqua. I guess we could just go full Shrek, but something tells me that's not the way to go. No, you know what? I can't find any good colors, so there we go. There we go. We are going full Shrek. Full Shrek green here. <laughs> Somebody once told me Ventus was gonna fight now. So once again, we're gonna fight Monstro this time as Ventus, but we're gonna change up our commands a little bit. Only a little bit. We're still gonna have, oh wow, we only have one Mind Square, okay. I'm actually gonna equip Mind Shield as well then. I thought we had more than that, okay. There we go. We're gonna use Faith. Uh, we could use Ars Arcanum as well, actually. I think that would be fun. And uh, what else? Is there any good like one slot commands Ven has? Not really. Oh, if we have Faith, we don't need Kiraga. So actually what I think we'll do is we'll equip Time Splicer then. There we go. Faith, Ars Arcanum, Time Splicer, Mind Square, and Mind Shield with Multi Vortex. And we are still using the Lost Memory Keyoid. Cool. So with this set up, now we're going to fight Monster of the Sea with Ventus. <laughs> it's weird how Ven's Keyblade is the normal color, but he is just like, green. 
fly, you fools! <laughs> yeah, take that. Yeah, uh-huh. Oh yeah, time splicer, baby. Man, time splicer is so freaking good. And there we go. We cleared out the enemies. I'll try to show off more of the monster fight, because Aqua just absolutely obliterated him. And he didn't even get a chance to attack. Versus Monstro. So I'll show you what happens if you don't uh, hit him with a bunch of the barrels all at once. So we can hit him with one. He'll just kind of chill around. We're gonna put the mine square down, because Monstro, there's a good chance he'll... Either jump on top of them like this. There we go. Okay. I guess that's one way to do it. Oh boy, Fever Pitch, my favorite. Are you gonna jump for it or are you gonna splash the water? Okay. Mind Square is going to be key for fighting Monstro. If you don't have Mind Square or, like, Mind Shield or one of those, then, um, good luck. Because Monstro is actually surprisingly fast. And one of the few options you have of actually attacking him is by putting mines down and waiting for him to, like, jump over the mines. And look at, yeah, look at how much damage that deals. Monstro is kind of like the Phantom in that he's more of a puzzle fight, but once you know the solution to the puzzle, it, it's easy to deal with. Also, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, darn it. Oh, man, the mine square. <laughs> that was an interesting mine square. There we go. So that's another way to deal with Monstro. You don't have to knock him unconscious and go on his ton. That's just the easiest way of doing it. But yeah, good luck beating Monstro if you don't use any of the mind commands. And we still beat him in plenty of time. And heck, we didn't even run out of time and get eaten again. That's what surprises me. And we get mini. Yay, we collected all those medals. Hooray. Also, if memory serves, Ven actually has couple of arena challenges he hasn't cleared, because I believe some of the arena challenges you don't unlock until you reach certain checkpoints in other characters' stories. So, like, one of the uh, events is Time to Chill. I don't think you unlock Time to Chill until Terra has beaten Zack in his folder, and Aqua has beaten the Ice Colossus and Hades in her folder. Once both of those have been reached, you can unlock that one, but otherwise it's out of reach, so... Honestly, I think this is still a pretty solid... Combination. You know what? Actually, yeah, it is. The only thing is we're going to replace Mine Shield with Thunder Surge. But honestly, with Faith, we don't need healing. Because Faith is basically all the healing we need. So if we take a look at Arena Mode... Yeah, okay, Wheels of Misfortune. So this is literally level 1. Four rounds. It's super easy. But the reason we didn't get it in Terra or Ven's story is because we need to have cleared the uh, Cursed Coach in Ca Aqua's version of Castle of Dreams. Before that happens, you don't get access to this one, so uh, this should be laughably easy considered how strong, considering how strong we are. Actually, let's use multi vortex. Yeah, look at how easily we're defeating these guys. Yeah. 
Here we go. Cursed coach time. Honestly, this alone might defeat- Oh my gosh, yeah, that's- Oh, completely wrecked. One shot lock. Insta-death. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. Oh well. You. Win. Yep, here we go. Time to chill. We already played this as Aqua, but it should be interesting as Ven, because he hasn't fought like any of the bosses we fight here. Also, the enemies here are quite a bit tougher than they were in the uh, last round. It has been a while since I've used Fever Pitch. Because it's just not very good. Hi, Wien Blade. Oh, I love Wien Blade. Probably should have put a Magna Gun in my deck. Oh, well. Freeze the Mandrakes with Time Splicer. <laughs> Here we go. Zack and Hades. Okay, I'm avoiding that uh, Akko Slash. I don't really want to deal with that. <laughs> How do you like Time Splicer, Zack? How do you like being Akko Slashed? If only I could dealing Zack to fight Zack. That would be funny. Bye bye. I do love that fight though. Hades and uh, Dark Zack is a great fight. Man, Wind Blade is super good too. It's not quite as good as Rhythm Mixer, but it's still like stupidly effective.
yeah, Time Splicer might be a little broken. Just maybe a little bit. Hi, Ice Colossus. Yeah, you're you're easy. Look at how much Ars Arcanum is dealing. It's insane. But heck, Time Splicer doesn't even need to be able to freeze time in order to be stupid effective. Look at how much damage we're dealing with Time Splicer. Boom! Maximum HP increased. <laughs> Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You win. You did not block very much at all. You only get 250 medals. Whatever. Okay, as Ventus, I just beat Monstro in 47 seconds. That's gotta be a record, right? And there we go, we reached the last medal milestone, and now we can prepare for the villain's vendetta for Ventus, which we're gonna prepare for very, very differently. We don't have Triple Fyraga these days, so, um, not as Ventus. So we've gotta go for a different strategy, and this is my, uh, different strategy for Ventus. It is... Thunder Surge, Thunder Surge, Thunder Surge, Thunder Surge. We'll follow that up with two Mind Squares, and then two Kiragas at the end. And this combination should work quite well for us. All right, Villain's Vendetta, five stars, eight rounds. Same bosses that Aqua fought, but we don't have Triple Fyraga to just cheese fiends. We've actually got to fight more on our own merits. Although we can still cartwheel abuse, or not cartwheel, we can still dodge roll abuse, which is almost as good as cartwheel abuse. Terra's going to be the one who's left high and dry. <laughs> Even Iron and Prisoner 1 can be tricky. Without triple fire rocket shoes. That's why we included the mind squares. Mainly for the Iron and Prisoners. Ooh, Riven Mixer, yes please. not get to eat Shrek. No, you don't. Bye-bye. First carriage is simple. Wheelmaster, you'll be a little trickier. That's another thing. Mind Square and Thunder. Oh shoot! Mind Square and Thunder Surge both lead to Riven Mixer. Unfortunately, Riven Mixer once you start attacking, it's really hard to stop, which can lead to your untimely demise. Go. Oh, this is gonna be good. And 
unless he just abuses his invincibility for you. I don't think this will kill him. But it'll come close. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, man. I told you guys. Thunder Surge, Mind Square. Two of the best com offensive commands in the game. This is just Thunder Surge stuff. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, Iron Imprisoner 2. Now we're off to the Ice Colossus. My leaf bracer not working all of a sudden. Okay, here we go. Once we get rid of the mixer, we move in between his two giant legs. We'll be able to hit him with all of the shockwaves easily. The fact that both Thunder Surge and Mind Square lead you into Ribbon Mixer is just absurd. I'm so glad it is the case, though. Rats, I was hoping to save the finisher for this next fight. Oh no, I don't want to do Payback Raid. The fact that they just charge right over the mines and don't even try to avoid them is just fantastic for us. No. Time to dodge roll. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Right there.
Avoid the uh, avoid the hammer. No. Why didn't I stagger for as long? All right, back to Iron and Prisoner Free. has screwed me up a lot. <laughs> no, come on! I did cure! So much for Leaf Bracer. This is, this is why I hate the Iron and Prisoners. There's like no openings. And they can just shrug off your attack and be like, nope, you're dying. Alright, here we are again. style change can royally screw you over because it removes your invincibility frames. See, if he starts doing this when he has a decent amount of distance between the two of us, it's not too bad. But sometimes his hammer swings will stagger you for longer just so he can hit you with more of them. Even though other times they don't stagger you like at all. Yes, there we go. Die, I'm in a prisoner for you. Wait, what? Oh, that is not fair. You were already dead. You can't hit me after you're already dead. This'll finish Trinity the armor. Goodbye. Alright, time for the big boy, Iron and Prisoner 4. I do not like this fight one bit. 
but I'll count my blessings now before I have to do it as Terra. Like, right there. Right there, his hammers stagger you for longer than they normally do, just so that way he could hit me with more of them. And reduce my HP to zero. Oh. Yes. 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 Okay. So now he's gonna go around and try to suck me in. That's okay. And is he gonna go super desperation move? He is. He's not triggering the mind square. What a cheater! He's moved right over the mines and he didn't get triggered by it. One of those reasons why I hate Iron Prisoner 4, because it's like impossible to hit him and it takes forever to do it quote unquote safely. But of course, there is no way of doing this fight safely. Why did he target the cage when I only locked onto him? Oh, he's doing a stupid teleport move. Well, that's why. That's really the only reliable way of damaging him, is to use Mind Square right before he pops up above the ground. <laughs> Thunder Surge helps, but it's not perfectly safe. Oh man, this fight is garbage! It's a really poorly designed. And if you think this fight's poorly designed, wait till you see the other bonus bosses. They're much worse. Much worse. What? BS. I was staggering from damage, and it didn't trigger second chance at once more, even though I was staggering from damage. Because I was mashing the cure button. There's no... Ugh. I hate this guy so much. Alright, my goal for Iron and Prisoner 4, I want to start the round with a Rhythm Mixer finisher already ready to unleash on him. That's my goal. If I can do that, it'll make the fight a lot shorter. So like I'm in Rhythm Mixer now, but I'm not going I'm gonna build up the finisher, but I'm not going to use it. Because I really want to use that finisher. Here we go. So I'll hold on to the finisher and I'll use it for Iron Prisoner. And here's hoping that'll let me shave off a bunch of his HP right away. And we can hopefully beat him a little bit easier. Here you go, man. Iron Prisoner 4. Let's go. So what's he going to do first? Okay. That's exactly what I wanted to see. 
There we go. Yeah, we took out a bunch of his HP right away. That's great. That's like half his HP gone right there. The Birth by Sleep post game is basically mash square everywhere you go. And mash mind square everywhere you go. Shot locking can deal a lot of damage, but it is risky because you're completely open at the end of it. Oh, sure, why not? Why not spam this move? Yeah, this is fair. going well. If you want to keep spamming this attack, that's fine. I can just dodge roll past it all. All you're doing is prolonging the inevitable Iron and Prisoner 4. Pulls out the cage, I can Thunder Surge him a bunch. Is he seriously sucking me in again? He is seriously doing this attack again. Come on, bro. Just give up. Oh my god, ugh. See, this fight's just not fun at all. The only safe times to actually attack him are really few and far between, and he just spams these really long sequences of moves where you just can't do anything. It's not enjoyable. Die, Iron and Prisoner 4! <laughs> Jeez Louise, that guy is annoying. You win! Hey, what the heck? He hit me after I had already won. That's how much of a cheater that guy is. Still didn't get the 25 style changes and shot locks, though. But we do still get the ultimate weapon. How grand. Let's equip that immediately. Oh, yeah. Finally. Oh, you didn't forget about Terra now, did you? I hope not. Alright, let's see what Terra's armor can turn into. I've actually never tried. We could go deep if we... Ooh, wait. Now that's actually interesting. <laughs> Terra likes pink. No, no, we're not going pink, Terra. I don't think that's a good idea. He doesn't seem like the type. Ooh. I actually like that. I actually really like that. The golden armor. And then as you go down, it, oh, <laughs> we go red with rage, but no, I like the golden armor. Maybe we could find like a middle ground, so it's not like, that's a little too yellow. Maybe like 120. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. It's very reminiscent of his original armor. It's just looks fancier. All right, so right now we've got our, uh, our ice cream deck. We're not, we're not going with for this. Although, actually... Okay. So first up... So now we're gonna do those two... 
easy challenges, easy arena challenges as Terra. So for the one where we all we do is fight the uh, what do you call it? The one where we fight the cursed coach. That one should be pretty easy. So I think for that one we can just use like meteor, mega flare, and what else? Uh, maybe some thunder surge Ooh, or chaos blade. I like chaos blade. It would help if I selected the right one. Chaos Blade and Sonic Blades. There we go. This should be fun. And because we're actually using magic, we will... Oh, no! Actually, wait. We have the ends of the earth equipped. Okay, hang on. Sweet stack is far... Oh, I can't believe we're using the freaking pixie petal. My gosh. <laughs> Tara's like, I feel stupid. Well, that's good, Tara. You are stupid. But... <laughs> it, 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 the Keyblade truly matches you, you know? Alright, here we go. Wheels of Misfortune should be simple. Let's roll. You're like such a dope wielding this flower key game. It still didn't kill the freaking fire enemies. Well, let's see you survive that. Good job with the Chaos Blade, Terra. Just really great. There we go. Finally, Mega Flare works for its intended purpose. Rock Breaker! Take that. Alright, well that took Terra an embarrassingly long time to do, even with the magic keyblade. Good job. Forgot how bad Terra's magic is. Alright, here we go. Cursed Coach, this should be really easy. We've got two Sonic Blades. I love how you can stun lock things with Sonic Blade. Just two Sonic Blades is all it takes, by the way, if you've got five attack aim. Oh, really, Terra? You were facing the wrong direction. There we go. Easy. Although it took, long took Terra a little longer than I would have liked, but whatever. There you go, Terra. Good job. You win. Oh, it was down to the wire, but we barely did it. Okay, now we need a new deck if we're going up against Time to Chill, so... Go back to Chaos Ripper. Ten strength, baby. No Mega Flare. However, we will equip uh, some Magnegas. We will also equip a Kiraga for safety. Chaos Blade is still fine. We will definitely use a Thunder Surge. And our Solemn. I like our Solemn. Here we go. Time to chill. We are definitely not going to block that many times, but whatever. We'll just deal with it. Round one. Submit! Nice job, Terra. Okay, 
Chaos Blade I thought you could use in midair. The fact that you can't is kind of a pain in the butt. Dark Impulse, yes. Good going, Terra. Let's use the darkness, just like the bad guys told us to. Dude, our song is so boss. All right, here we go. Yeah, we, we can't really avoid that as Terra. Terra, you can get your revenge on Hades for tricking you. I'm not trying to escape, bro. Oh my gosh, we just took off like three bars of HP with our assault. Sorry, Zack, but it's over for you. Oh, that was a fun one, though. Zack's one of those fights that's tough but fair. Very rare in this game to get that. Missed the I have missed the pure raw power of Terra. There's something to be said when your physical combos just like absolutely obliterate people. Submit. Just like that. Yes, Rhythm Mixer! Terra's Rhythm Mixer is truly terrifying, even in comparison to the other Rhythm Mixers. Alright, Ice Colossus. It's too bad Hades doesn't say, All yours, Frosty, in this version, but, ah uh, well. Chaos Blade, I thought you would do a lot more damage than that. I should have just equipped the Sonic Blade, man. Look at that health bar that just magically disappears. <laughs> work, Terra. And man, I am loving the golden armor on him. I just wish I could get a good set of armor for Ventus, but no. Had to go with Shrek Green. It was the only one that worked. Alright. Alright, we've got our new command set, and now... Alright, time to take on Monster of the Sea as Terra. Here we go. Move to the middle of the hub when you're ready. Oh, I was born ready. Alright, Monstro, don't think just because I'm not as magically powerful as the other guys means that I'm going to be easy. For example... Wait, Bazooka! I love Ultima Cannon. Submit indeed, alright. Go 
first round was easy. Now it's first Monstro himself. So if we knock him unconscious... Oh no, he escaped. Oh, I forgot about his little slap a move. Uh oh. Uh, no, no, no! Oh, I don't want to go into Monstro again, no. Uh, ah! Oh! Ow. Ah, that actually didn't hurt nearly as much as I thought it would. Monstro. You don't scare me anymore. So his mind squares are not doing very much damage. But our psalm should. Ooh. Submit! Monstro. What are you gonna do? Oh, he's sneezing water out. Not really a reliable way of avoiding that. Stop stalling, Monstro. He really wants to eat me again. Go. I was waiting for you to do that. Take that. Oh, look, he's beach. Okay. You are a lucky, Monstro. If I hadn't run off a cliff with my R Solemn, you'd be dead right now. I only have like 10 seconds left before he eats me again. No! No! He's gonna eat me again! Shoot. Now we have to go on to round three. Back inside Monster and it's much worse because there's poison everywhere now. Oh, great, and Mandrakes everywhere, too. My, like, least favorite enemies. Oh, wait, not Mandrakes, no. Here we go. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, Monstro. You may you may have dealt with me twice, but this time, this time you're going down. In fact, I think one barrel is gonna take him out. Okay, two barrels will take him out. Hey, you should be dead, Monstro. Goodbye. Darn it, we couldn't hit it hard enough. Oh man. Okay. Ultima Cannon! There we go. Stupid Monstro. He's a lot, he's more difficult to deal with than Ter with Terra, but still not too bad. You win. And we still got him down to the wire. And we obtained Mini. Alright, let's try to beat Monstro a bit quicker this time. 
The Mega Flare is not really going to help Terra because his Mega Flare is just not powerful enough to defeat these enemies. So we're still going to have to rely on like Magnaga here. That's okay. All we want to do is get into Rhythm Mixer. No, we didn't get into Rhythm Mixer. Well, that sucks. We'll deal with it. He's already off to a really bad start. Okay, there we go. Thunderbolt command style. So now, hopefully, we can quickly knock Monstro unconscious. Move on his ton, go into Rhythm Mixer, and just absolutely obliterate him. I'm gonna use this barrel over here. There we go. Here we are. Come on, hurry, Terra. There we go, okay. Still definitely slower than Ventus and Aqua, but a lot faster than his first attempt. And this is still the best battle to grind up medals for. Yeah, 1 minute 36. Man, that's... we gotta, we gotta fix that. Is Terra's Mega Flare powerful enough? I don't think it is, but I'm gonna try it. He only has one of them. We do have our Solemn as well, which could... Ten, but that might take us into the wrong command style, so... Just to give Terra that extra boost of power, we'll go Sweet Stack. <laughs> Terra's gonna wield the Ice Cream Keyblade in order to take on Monstro. It seems to have the best balance of strength and magic. It has six extra magic over the Chaos Ripper and only, like, four less strength, so... I think that's the way to do it. Hopefully our Mega Flare will be strong enough, otherwise we're gonna have to go back to the Magnet strategy. Terra, do you feel like a boss? No. Well, you look like one. Thanks. Yeah, see, Terra's like just not strong enough to be able to take them on. <sighs> Finally beat Monstro all those times. All right. Now we can play Villain's Vendetta as Terra. Oh boy, that's he's gonna suck. So already we've got a good amount of our deck the way we want it. We're gonna do the same deck that Ventus had. Thunder Surges, Mind Squares, Kiragas. Here we are. Thunder Surge, Mind Square, Thunder Surge, Kiraga. Thunder Surge, Mind Square, Thunder Scourge. Thunder Scourge. Never fain, we are removing Sonic Impact. I thought we had already removed it, but no, we have not. And we're definitely going to need to remove it for this fight. We're also not going to use Ultima Cannon. We are instead going to go back to our original Sonic Shadow. Or actually... Sonic Shadow or Dark? Dark Volley. Both should be fine. I'll do, I'll do Sonic Shadow. Alright, well, we had a lot of trouble with uh, Ventus on this, and Ventus has the dodge roll that gives him max invincibility, so I can't even imagine how annoying this is going to be as Terra, who has the terrible slide, which gives you minimal invincibility frames. But, oh uh, well. We'll just have to see. These Terra's Thunder Surges are amazing! Oh yeah, Terra's Thunder Surges hit so hard! Because of his high offensive attack. As opposed to defensive attack, yes. Alright, I want to knock him down before I use... Ah, uh, there we go. Now we can use Rhythm Mixer. Maybe this will actually be easier for Terra than for Ventus, because Terra's Rhythm Mixer is just so much more powerful. Terra's Rhythm Mixer can take out like six bars of HP all on its own. I'm starting to wish I had used Dark Volley instead, because I forgot Sonic Shadow can only lock on like a couple of times. Oh yeah. Right, 
Here we go. Yes. Doggone it, he always does the double I'm invincible thing whenever we go in Rhythm Mixer. Bye, Wheelmaster. At least it's easy to get, it's quick and easy to get the max shot lock off if you only have to lock on ten times. Oh, you are so dead. You are so dead. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, for Terra, it's like, enter Rhythm Mixer, profit. Still don't believe me that Thunder Surge is the most overpowered command in the entire game. Plowing through these bosses. Please move away. Actually, Terra's higher defense is really helping him out. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Use this move, please. Actually destroying it. Oh shoot. Well that's uh oh never mind. One Thunder Search destroyed this the uh cage. Oh yeah, but this is where you end. Okay, really? Why does it sometimes stagger you for way longer than it normally does? Well, goodbye, Iron and Prisoner Free. Trinity armor, huh? This shouldn't be too hard. That could have ended really badly. Oh. Save Rhythm Mixer's finisher for Iron and Prisoner 4, just like for Ventus. Yes. Are we going to first try this with Terra? I highly doubt it, but that would be awesome if we could, because I am about to hit the free hour mark for this recording. A lot of it will get cut out, but maybe I should have split this into two groups. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What the heck? He just... <laughs> Demolish. Okay, well. Oh no. Oh no, you don't. Yeah, you can't get me when I'm at the opposite end of the course. 
I'm just gonna chill out here and hope I don't get hit by anything. <laughs> so, out there in YouTube land, how is your day going? I'm Tara. <laughs> and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ow. First tried villain's vendetta with Terra. Ventus died like ten times, but Terra did it first try, like a boss. And he has the worst. What the? He was dead. How did he do that? <laughs> and that's the last time we have to fight Iron and Prisoner Four, and we get the ultimate weapon for Terra. Which is, uh, if we take a look at the ultimate weapon, it's actually uh, not as good as Chaos River. It has three less strength. I mean, it has plus eight magic. So, I mean. It's still pretty good, but I mean, come on, Chaos Ripper, man. I want the power of the darkness. Also, we got a bunch of medals, and I forgot to exchange medals as Ventus. Whoops, that was a thing. So let's get those group Cure, Cura, Curaga. That's great. We can get Confetti. We can, oh, nope, we already got fireworks from the uh, sticker album. We can get the Victory Pose. Grab Vanish. We have Trinity Limit, we have Voltage Stack, we need Unison Rush. We can get Xantasukin from here as well, that's interesting. Cool. Good job, Terra. Well played. Alright, well that's gonna do it for this episode of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix. Thanks for watching, everybody. I did not think that this would take this long, but that was a free hour recorded video. Not going to be three hours after editing, but I'm not sure if I should split this into two parts, with one part being Monstro and one part being the Villain's Vendetta slash the other arena challenges, or if it's going to be just one big mega video. I don't know, but the next, uh, the next bonus videos will be a lot more condensed and a lot more focused. Because at this point, we literally just have four bonus bosses left in the game, and each video will basically be focused on one of those four bonus bosses. So, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.